Good morning children. I welcome you all to a new class in physics today and we are going to begin with the second semester. I have picked up the chapter current electricity in the second semester which I am going to explain it to you today. Children we all know that electricity forms an integral part of our lives because there are so many appliances which work on electricity. We use refrigerators, television, computer, laptops, we have microwave oven, geyser and many many such appliances in our houses which work on electricity. We can actually not imagine a life without electricity. Okay, so let us focus at what is electric current. Electric current is denoted by the symbol capital I. And the definition for electric current is, it is the rate of flow of charge. In short, electric current is the rate of flow of charge. But if you technically see, the definition is rate of flow of charge across a cross section of a given conductor, normal to the direction of the flow of current. And it is given by the formula, I is equal to Q upon T. Where I stands for the current, Q for the charge and T for the time. Now here what does charge refer to? The charge is the charge of an electron. Okay, and T is the time or the duration for which the current is flowing. So if you have a look at a conductor, what is a conductor? Children, conductor are metals. They are good conductors of electricity. And a conductor, when a current flows through a conductor, it means that it, represented, it represents the flow of electrons. So we say that in a conductor, current flows due to the movement of electrons through it. And in case of an electrolyte, current flows through an electrolyte due to the movement of ions. That is the positive and the negative ions, the cations and the anions. Okay? Now, current, again I come back to, current is given by the formula Q upon T and Q is equal to NE. So, we I can also say that current is also equal to NE upon T, where N refers to the number of electrons and E refers to a charge of a single electron and it has got a fixed charge, children. The charge of an electron is 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19 coulombs. So, therefore, the formula for current is Q by T or it is also equal to Ne upon T. Okay. Now, let us look at the SI unit of current children. The SI unit of current is ampere. Okay. And for charge is coulomb and for time is second. So, therefore, I say 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb upon 1 second. If I want to define 1 ampere, how do I define it? I look at this formula and I look at this substitution simultaneously. Just carefully see how do I define it. I say current is said to be 1 ampere when a charge of 1 coulomb flows through a conductor in time 1 second. I repeat current is said to be 1 ampere when a charge of 1 coulomb flows through a conductor in time 1 second. So, this is how I define 1 ampere current. Okay. And uh, there are other units also children. There are smaller units of current also. The SI unit is ampere but there are some smaller units. Suppose if I say that a small denomination of current is flowing through a conductor. So, I need smaller units of current and they are milliampere and microampere. Now, let us look at the relation of these units with the SI unit. 1 milliampere is equal to 10 to power minus 3 amperes and 1 microampere is equal to 10 to power minus 6 amperes. So, these are the smaller units of current and the SI unit of current is 1 ampere. Okay, children. Now, let us look at a question which is normally asked for 2 marks. It says uh, that you have a charge of 1 coulomb. And you have to find out the number of electrons which are flowing through the charge of 1 coulomb. We use the formula Q is equal to Ne where Q stands for the charge. So, I write it as 1 coulomb. It is given to us that 1 coulomb charge is there. You are supposed to find out the number of electrons. So, I keep it as N and E I uh, substitute as the charge of a single electron that is 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19. Now, if I want to find out the value of n, I shift 1.6 to the other side. I get 1 upon 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 is equal to n. I get rid of the decimal. So, I will get 10 upon 16 into 10 to the power minus 19. 
what is 10 upon 16 10 upon 16 is 0 0.625 so i get n is equal to 0 0.625 and i take the 10 to power minus 19 up i shift it up now when i shift it up i get it as uh, 0 0.625 into 10 to power plus 19 okay if i want to shift the decimal one toward one uh, decimal towards the right side i get it as 6.25 into 10 to power 18 electrons so therefore how many electrons are flowing through one coulomb charge they are equal to 6.25 into 10 to power 18 electrons if in exam it is asked how many electrons in two coulomb charge i will multiply this value by two if i want to find out how many electrons in five coulomb charge i will multiply this value by five so this way i am able to find out the number of electrons flowing through one coulomb charge okay let's move to the next topic now children and that is uh, a very important topic for that i have drawn a diagram and here in this particular diagram i have uh, taken two conductors namely a and b and these two conductors i have connected with the help of a connecting wire okay and what is the difference between these two conductors one conductor is at a high potential and the other is at a low potential now basically what is this one uh, conductor is said to have a defi uh, deficiency of electrons or a deficit of electrons therefore it is denoted by a plus sign and the other conductor is said to be having an excess of electrons so it, it is denoted by a minus sign or a negative sign so the one which is having a deficit of electrons is said to be at high potential and the one which is having excess of electrons is said to be at low potential this is the common convention that is the one which has excess of electrons is low is at low potential and the one which has deficit of electrons it has is ha, is at high potential okay i connect it with the help of a wire now what we have to look at is that when i say that i want to know the flow of electrons from which conductor to which conductor so the answer is the electrons will flow from conductor b to conductor a now why so because conductor b is having excess of electrons so naturally the flow of electrons will be from low potential to high potential but if i want to represent it in an electric circuit uh, then i say that the current is flowing from high to low and that is called as conventional flow of current this is what i want to explain to you children that there is a difference between actual flow of current or electronic flow of current or flow of electrons and conventional current let us look at what is the difference if i say flow of electrons or electronic current then it is from low to high that is from b to a but if i say conventional current then it is always from high potential to low potential and that is from a to b so this concept should be very very clear to you children because if it is asked in the exam that what is the direction of flow of electronic current in this diagram then you will say it is from b to a and what is the direction of flow of conventional current in this diagram and that will be from a to b okay now let us look at the next topic what is a source of current a source of current is from where do we obtain current basically the source of current could be of two types it could be a direct current source it could be an alternating current source what is the difference between a direct and an alternating current source a direct current source is that which provides us current continuously non-stop flow of current and it is of a single magnitude that is a constant magnitude current and the direction is only in one particular direction okay that is called as direct current that is uh, if we obtain direct current from a cell or a battery children you must have seen uh, these type of pencil cells which you use to uh, to work, uh, various appliances work on this pencil cell you can see it has two terminals one is the positive terminal this is the positive terminal of the cell this is the negative terminal of the cell children it is denoted by a longer um, a longer line which represents the positive terminal and a shorter line which represents the negative terminal and um, 
it provides us direct current then you have a group of cells when you have a group of cells uh, placed end to end then they form a battery okay naturally it is understood that a battery is a group of cells so it is going to provide us with greater denomination of current while a cell is a single cell so it will pro provide us a weak uh, current and direct current again i tell you is of a single magnitude and it flows in a single direction and it is um, you know it is basically uh, uh, a current which is a continuous supply what about alternating current children alternating current is shown by this symbol it is a sign it is a symbol which is called a sine curve okay this is the symbol to denote an alternating current and alternating current is a current which we obtain in our household uh, circuit that is the mains of our house and an ac generator provide us with an alternating source of current what is an alternating source children an alternating source of current is a current which keeps on continuously changing its direction or reversing its direction every second so the magnitude of current is not constant it gives us a varying magnitude of current the direction also keeps on varying the magnitude varies and it some it it gives you you know not a continuous supply of current it does not give you a continuous supply of current so this is the difference between a direct and a alternating source of current okay and you can see that the symbols with which it is denoted now after uh, looking at the different sources of current we come to uh, uh we come to this we have already discussed children what is direct current source i told you it is a constant supply and it is one directional and we get it from a cell okay and in case of a cell let us look at in case of a cell what is the energy conversion in a cell the chemical energy is getting converted to electrical energy and i told you that inside a cell there are different chemicals which are filled and they are covered by this case which is a metallic cover okay and in this the chemicals uh, the chemical energy gets converted to electrical energy and it is made up made up of two electrodes positive electrode and negative electrode the positive electrode is known as anode and the negative electrode is known as cathode and in some of the cells this is a dry cell it is a dry cell but you have other cells which have uh, electrolyte filled in it okay and they have electrolyte in the form of a solution or a jelly now those are also cells okay now the cells basically are of two types now let us look at the two types of cells children one is the primary cell and the other is a secondary cell let us look at the difference between the two a primary cell is a cell which is not rechargeable it is a use and throw cell children in this the conversion is from chemical to electrical and an irreversible reaction occurs while a secondary cell is a cell which can be recharged so the chemical reaction is reversible and when you are using such a type of cell the chemical is getting converted to electrical and when it is used for recharging it is the other way around the electrical will be converted to chemical and stored in it so basically a primary cell is a use and throw cell and a secondary cell is a rechargeable cell a primary cell has a low resistance so therefore it gives you a weak current while a secondary cell has a higher resistance in it therefore it gives you sorry a weaker current uh, a weaker resistance in it therefore it gives you a high current okay so basically the resistance in case of a primary cell is uh, high so it will give you a weak current and a secondary cell has a low resistance so it will give you a high current what are the examples of a primary cell a simple voltaic cell a dry cell and a daniel cell are examples of primary cell while a lead, a lead accumulator and a lithium hydrogen battery are examples of secondary cell children uh, the pencil cell which i showed you is a primary cell while inverter batteries which you use at home they are the secondary cells they are the rechargeable cells that is when you use them in that case the chemical energy is converting to electrical and you can recharge them again and use them over and over again so they are the secondary cells so we look at the difference we saw just saw the difference between a primary cell and a secondary cell children so uh, where you looked at uh, you looked at these components now we move on to a new topic and that is we are going to study that in an electric circuit basically what are the components which are different components which we are used there are many components used in an electric circuit i'll just uh, today i'm going to discuss in today's class i'll just discuss two components with you okay children the first one is key now let me tell you children key is an on off device 
on off device means that when you want that current should flow through a device or a circuit you on the key and when you want no current should flow you off it there are different types of keys you have a plug key you have a tapping key you have a switch okay and here i've drawn the symbols this is a open plug key closed plug key open tapping key closed plug uh, tapping key open switch closed switch all the different types of keys have the same function that is they are a on off device when we when we when they are in off condition no current flows when they are in on condition current flows through them okay now we look at the second component and that's the ammeter basically what is an ammeter this is how it is symbolized it has got a positive and a negative terminal and an ammeter is an instrument which is used to measure the amount of current flowing through a circuit okay through a circuit if i want to know how much current is flowing i use a i install a ammeter and it records the amount of current flowing through it it is always connected in series and it is itself got a low resistance because we don't want that it should it should actually interfere with the amount of current flowing through the circuit so therefore an ammeter is a device which is actually uh, used to measure the amount of current flowing it is connected in series and it has got a low resistance okay children so these two components have discussed about an electric circuit i'll be in the next lecture i'll be discussing some more components or uh, used in an electric circuit so i just want to have a quick recap of what we did in today's class children first of all i discussed with you what is electric current i gave you the formula for electric current we said the si unit of current is ampere and the smaller units are milli and micro ampere then i also discussed with you how many electrons flow through one coulomb charge okay and then i discussed with you the different sources of current children in which i told you that cell is one of the source of current and you have uh, two types of sources of current alternating source and direct current source direct current is a cell or a battery alternating current is the mains of our house or a ac generator okay and we discussed the difference between the two then i also explained to you that cells are of two types primary cell and secondary cell and we saw what is the basic difference between the two and we discussed only two components of an electric circuit one was the on off device that is the key and the other was the ammeter which is used to measure the amount of current flowing through a circuit so please focus to focus on all these topics and we will have i'll pick up your doubts in the doubt class children and then we will proceed with some more uh, components of an electric circuit in our next class okay thank you children